Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's show. And I have got an extra special guest lined up for me all the way from Nashville. The one, the only, one of the best guitarists in the world. Johnny Garcia, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Paul. How are you doing, bro? I'm doing great, mate. And I know we talked a little bit off air, and things have gone a little bit shaky over there, haven't they, with the, the COVID and everything? Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty messy and pretty dangerous right now, you know. Uh, uh, you know, these tours are getting cancelled and so forth. And But, you know, I'm not even concerned about that, man. I'm, I'm like, good grief, we need to get rid of this, get rid of this bug. Yeah. Well, you had a good run, I mean, obviously from Kansas City onwards. I mean, just to tell the people as well, you're an integral part of Garth Brooks's band, but also, who's the boss, Trisha Yearwood's band for, what, since 1991? Yes, uh, I uh, came up and auditioned. I came up from Texas to audition for Trisha in June of 91. So this last June, her and I had our 30th anniversary. Wow. <laughs> it's, 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 it's been nothing but absolutely amazing. I just caught the YouTube, um, the the Opry with Carla Pierce and, and, and a mm -hmm. great friend of mine, Jeannie yes. Seely, was on. And mm -hmm. I caught the old show and it was just phenomenal to see Trisha back in full swing again. Oh yes, absolutely. And and uh, I mean, I've been doing stuff with her here the last few months, but it's mainly been like TV stuff and no audience, you know, kind of thing, uh, uh, or just you know, kind of private performances and so forth. And it was great to, you know, at the opera was sold out, and, and man, it was great. You know, I walked on stage and I'm like, oh my god, I forgot that there's an audience here. It was great. But anyway, the, both Carly and Trisha, were, as you heard, they just sounded amazing. Uh, we had actually met um, Carla Pierce when she came to London, um, mm -hmm. and so such a sweet girl. But her career is just going on, on, on up, and it was so nice that the, you know the award came to her by Trisha, you know, and it was just unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. But um, but like I said, you've, you've obviously got that side of, of of your career. But like I said, for a number of years. Um, and also having a big sabbatical in the middle with Garth Brooks as well. And you've just done one of what, what I can look at to me um, as one of the biggest events I've known for a long, long time at Nebraska. Yes, Lincoln. Uh, right now, uh, uh, I had taken time off the Garth tour to go do a Trisha tour, right? A couple of years ago, going to do like a two year tour and I was going to resume back with Garth. So I was not in Lincoln. Uh, my, my buddy uh, Chris Lusinger and Gordon Kennedy are playing electric guitar right now. They're phenomenal guitar players and, and stuff. But uh, you know, me and Garth will be back together soon. You know, it's coming around the corner again. So, yeah. but anyway, I'm, I'm I'm either with him or with her or with both. You know, so that last arena tour was obviously the, the both of them together. So that was that was really really amazing and absolutely super exhausting. <laughs> two shows a night in one arena, you know, kind of thing. Two, and two also parts. dive bar, a couple of dive bars interjected yeah. into the, was it one in Seattle as well? Uh, I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I was talking to, to Jimmy Mattingly uh, last week, and he, I think you were, ju oh, the week before, actually, I think you, you were just one rehearsal in for the Kansas City Stadium. Yeah. I think that was 75 thousand but i think nebraska lincoln was about 85 plus maybe eighty five thousand fans somewhere up there i think close to 90 somewhere you know but yeah those 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 shows are are enormous and uh some of those you know that i've done with garth like at yankee stadium and notre dame stadium or you know you just you look out in the audience and it's like it feels it feels like you're in, you know, for us, it still feels like we're in our living room for some reason. You know, it's <laughs> like uh, the, the, the more people, it's kind of like the easier it gets, you know, kind of thing. You know, to me, I've always found it uh, a little more difficult to perform for, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 people than it is for 100,000, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, it, even at my my very very low level, I mean, people have said about oh, why don't you know, when COVID hit about doing stream concerts like some of my colleagues in the UK, and I said that's not me. I, I like an audience, and like I said, I get more nervous not having an audience there than actually seeing you know 100, 150 people that that's at my level, and um and and that's that's where I get my buzz from. You know, I don't I don't jump off stages anymore and swing off off rafters. <laughs> not, not at my age, or smash yeah. guitars because I can't afford to. I'm not sponsored, um, but um, but no, it just looks phenomenal. And, and I said to Jimmy the other day, um, 
very, very fortunate in the early 90s that Garth had come over to Birmingham over here in the UK. Um, but unfortunately, I played soccer and I broke my leg, but I still went. And I'd, I'd forgot when he came up off, uh, you know, he came up um, from the middle of the floor. I forgot that I'd got a broken leg and, and in crutches. So I stood up and went, yeah. Ah! <laughs> Oh, man. I think he laughed. My, my, buddy, <laughs> my buddy Jimmy Mattingly and I have, you know, we've done hundreds and hundreds of shows with Garth. And he's also uh, now part of Trisha's band as well. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, boy, the man, we used to tear each other up on those Garth shows sometimes. Him and I would go at it full speed and just crash into each other. And all oh, that wow. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if our bones can take it anymore, but. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd said to Jimmy, I said, you know, do you ever get scared if you look over and Garth's got those wild eyes and you think, oh, oh, what's he going to get up to now? Have you ever, have you got sort of that trepidation when you look at each other and look at Jimmy and other band members and go, you've got to be on our metal here, Lou. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm particularly, Garth likes to be very physical on those big shows and, and I love it. It's great. And we're mm. physical right back with him. But man, he's he's like he's like a wall of stone, though. I mean, he's 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 a big guy and very strong and so forth. But I'm I'm pretty vulnerable on guitar solos, right? And and I'm over there way at the front of the stage or stage left or right, you know, in the middle of this solo, and I can hear the whole. Sh I can sit, feel the whole stage shaking as he's running. Oh to my. Work. And he's probably gonna knock the hell out of it. <laughs> in the middle of a guitar solo. You can't do much to defend yourself, you know. Kind of thing, you know? Well, who's yeah. uh, it? Was Steve Warner. I I'd, I'd spoke to Steve Warner a while ago, um, and I said my my fond memory was there was a recording of a show. Um, I think it was interjected with the the, the Island DVD, where it was the, the stage was cut like a G. And Steve Warner came up doing Long Neck Bottle. Yeah. And I said to Steve, I said, did you know what was happening? He said, no. He said, when Gar started jumping over the sort of G to him to sing Long Neck Bottle, he said, man, I said, I saw your eyes. And he was like, oh, no. <laughs> well, it's great to do right. that. I mean, that that's the show, isn't it? That's, that is, you know, not somebody sat there in front of a mic giving it that, you know, it, yeah. it's all, you know, massive amounts of energy i mean the one he did in england at the time i mean it just phenomenal in pieces was the album that, that, that was doing the tour at the time um it was just out of this world and still talks about to the you know this very very day but with with yourself i mean how did it all start i mean where did it all begin for you what was that sort of moment where you went music's my my path well you know i was uh i was born and raised in south texas just a couple of miles north of the Mexican border. Uh, my dad, I had two older brothers and they were both guitar players. My dad was a guitar player. Uh, and we, we played a lot of, you know, my dad played a lot of Spanish romantic music, you know, called boleros in, in Mexico and yeah, yeah. in the Hispanic world. Uh, so I, you know, there was guitars at the, at the house since I was a little bitty kid. And I don't know, maybe when I turned about 13, I hadn't been that interested in guitar, I mean, I knew how to play, you know, the basic chords, but I'd, I'd rather was playing football out in the street, barefoot with all my friends and all that kind of stuff, and you know, being knuckleheads after school and so forth. Uh, one day, I heard this 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 friend of my oldest brother named Roy Mayave uh, rehearsing with a band in my little hometown, and uh, I was pedaling my bicycle with my little best friend down the street, and we heard this music coming out of this house we had to stop and it was absolutely the guitar playing was out of this world uh he was my biggest influence his name was Roy Mayave and uh when we stopped and you know we stopped our bikes and knocked on the screen door and at first they didn't let us in but then they let us in and they just said you sit in that corner you sit in that corner don't make any noise and that day hearing that guy play uh, guitar wow I I got on my bicycle, went to my house, you know, as fast as I could. And I had all those records, my oldest brother had all those records, right? And I started learning all that stuff immediately. And 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 I guess it was it wasn't weird at the time, but 
within a couple of days, I was learning all those incredible solos already. Like, yeah. you know, uh, 10 years after, you know, Alvin Lee's I'm going home and that sort of gu guitar work. And, and whatever, you know, was out there at that point, like the early ZZ Top stuff and so forth, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I, I just thought guitar was easy come to find out that no, it's not. I just, I was just very gifted, you know? Yeah. So from there, by the age, within a year, I was playing in bands already and like playing at the bars at the age of 14, you know? Uh, down there was pretty lawless. Nobody cared, you know? How it was. <laughs> yeah, <that> sneaky beer <laughs> and a beer too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so I pretty... Pretty quickly, uh, I started playing with incredible bands down there in, in Texas. And then uh, a friend of mine that moved to Nashville, uh, I want to say 88 or so, his name was Craig Langford, a uh, bass player. He auditioned for the Trisha uh, bass playing position. And he recommended me. Uh, he, had, he would call me you know, from time to time if I wanted to audition uh, for, for the big artists at the time and I would always say no and then he'd, he'd have some choice words for me that I can't say on his podcast uh and then on the when he called me for Trisha uh he says I'm calling you for the last expletive time he says you're a dumbass if you don't come out and do this one and I didn't I didn't I haven't even heard of Trisha he says it's Trisha Yearwood she's got the number one song in America she's in love with a boy and I'm going I don't know what you're talking about man and at that point that was in my driveway at my house in Texas, listening to the end of the Houston Astros Cincinnati Reds uh, baseball game, because I was a big Astros fan. Uh, and it was on a Sunday evening and 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 the game was an AM, 7, 10 AM, right? And I had just gotten a cell phone in my company truck. I was an electrician down there. Uh, and and so he had, he somehow he got that number. But anyway, I hung up the phone and went in my house Next morning, I get in my truck, and my radio was on FM, and it was in a, on a country station, and that song was playing. Right? I heard wow. the voice, and I just stopped. Man, I got chills all over me, and I called him. I, I woke his ass up at 6 a.m. I said, I'm in. What do I do? So that's how it all started. So then he had to play some stuff for Garth Fundas, her producer, and for Tricia uh, that I had played on in Texas. And so they gave me a slot an audition slot for 30 minutes. Uh, and so I showed up a week later and I believe I, I was just one of four or five days total of guitar players. And uh, uh, I didn't know the songs very well, but I think I had like a, Trisha liked the, 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 the kind of gutsy guitar mm. kind, of, kind of thing, you know? So I ended up getting a job and never went back home. Uh, and so our first tour was uh, Trisha's first tour was opening for Garth back in 91. So that's how me and Garth met, you know, uh, wow. became really good friends very, very right away, you know, kind of thing. So, but that's, that's how it started, man, you know. Um, but I, I remember once I, you know, I'll say this to all the young musicians, uh, once I, I became dedicated right away when I was, well, when I was 13, as I was saying, but from there on, man, I was, I was practicing four to six hours a day. Yeah. I mean, like for all through my high school years and so forth. Uh, while all my buddies were like going to wild parties and stuff, man, I was there dropping needles on records, learning as much as I could, you know, and the way I saw it was that, you know, one of these days a door's gonna open. Yeah. And, you know, somebody's gonna open a door for me, but then it's gonna be up to me of what I do when I get in that door or when I get one foot in that door, right? So you just, you know, got to be prepared. And so I was prepared for the moment, you know, when it, when it came. Yeah. So well, it's like a football player, isn't it? Or a soccer player that, or any athlete as such, you know, you can't just go into a game, not practice, you know, you've got to have those nine mm -hmm. yards, you know, the hard yards behind you. And like I say, David <laughs> Beckham, how we used to take those free kicks. It'd yeah. be just, everybody's gone and got a shower when he was a young boy. He just keep bending them kicks, yeah. keep bending, you know, Maradona, you know, keep playing, keep playing after everybody's had a shower. And I think that's that's great advice for people that, in, including myself, because I'm just a rhythm player. I've all, I'm a, a very frustrated lead player. You know, I've not done it live on stage yet. I mean, I'm okay in the bedroom. I know all the theory. Um, oh, that's another thing. What's your favorite guitar? What kind of guitar would you, you know, you would say that's that's my signature guitar? 
Yay. This guitar has been through everything with me. It's 1962 Fender Strat. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have, I have, you know, some that I'm very, very, very dear, you know, my, my 69 335. Uh, you know, that's a very special guitar for me as well. And then I've got a few Les Pauls and Tellies and, you know, the whole collect, yeah. collecting guitars all through the years. There's probably a dozen of them that are very, very, very close to me, you know, yeah, but yeah. this, this is, this is the one, this is I, the one that Garth, Garth would tackle me with. And it's about <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to nick it off you. I mean, I, yeah. I was in, I was in Scotland or oh, some years ago and it was a little, uh pa shop i've just been in scotland this morning funny enough glasgow first thing this morning and um the, the shop's still there and i used to go in if i was working over there and um get plectrums and cables and you know but i, I went in for a plectrum i come out with um, a, a telecaster <laughs> like, yeah I, I saw this telecaster and it's not you know but it's a you know it's a fender paisley telecaster and i went oh my it was like a beam of light shone on it and it's right. still it's I still need to learn it properly, but it, it it's there. It's gonna be it's gonna be on the stage one of these days. But um I absolutely love it and everybody loves it. It's just got this pattern on it. But I think it's based on a Mexican telly rather than you know yeah. the, the standard stuff. But it's I think what those 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 Mexican tellies though and even strats are fantastic. Yeah. They're, they're fantastic. I think they changed those there's the series now. Now there's called the players, uh fenders. Yeah. Uh, but they're still made in Mexico, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It makes some really fine instruments. Uh, man, uh, uh, I just played on a record uh, that uh, guy named Vernon Vega from Las Vegas. And uh, I, I, I played on this line dance thing that was like nine minutes long. And he loved, this is, this is what happened, but he loved the, the, the guitar track so much that he, I wish I had it here, but he, he sent me, he gifted me a 1972 Les Paul Deluxe in wow. mint condition. That is unbelievable. It's you know, it's at the shop right now, getting some adjustments and stuff. But I'm going, dude, you're crazy, man. <laughs> he says, I can't play that thing like you, you can't. So it needs to be played. He says, I've had Oh, give it, while. Garth. He'll smash it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you what, I just got, I just thought about that about about guitars and one of the nice things, and I saw on Facebook somebody kindly posted uh, about the Nebraska gig last weekend was the fact there's a little girl on her dad's shoulders and said I had a big banner up it's my first garth gig and he sort of you know he saw her realized her name begin with g and he, he said right i need to give you a present and he just took his takamini off signed it give it over and i thought wow mm -hmm. you know this yeah, girl was just like <laughs> he's, done that. he's done that so so many times he's he's a man he's like the most generous yeah. compassionate man I've, I've ever known he's he, the human being part of him is absolutely golden, you know. I've heard that. I mean, I've become very good friends with Kent Blazy since doing the show. He's been on a couple of times for his Kent, and he was telling us about the, the, the beginning. And obviously, Tricia doing some um, some um, singing, you know, forget his uh, music heard. He, he, he'd used Tricia as a as a vocalist to demo. Yeah. Um, demos, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he's, he, come as, he, he was telling me a couple of stories and and Steve Warren has told me a couple of stories. Jimmy's told, give me one story of Garth. Well, man, I, I have thousands of them, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, but one that sticks out in your mind. Uh, a clean right. one. I don't want to, I don't want uh, just a clean yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. There's, there's, there's a gazillion of them that have to do with charity and, and yeah. helping kids and things we do to help kids out that, that are not well, that, there's a lot of that stuff that we do, but uh, one that I reminded him of not long ago was like, uh, this is nothing to do with the charity. It was just a thing that, you know, when I came to Nashville, uh, I was one of those guys that, 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 that you know, I, I felt like I had a lot of tone to offer and I had a lot of like soulfulness and, and emotional guitar playing uh, and also very precise and so forth, right? My first show with Garth, was at the Staples Center in LA uh, where the Lakers play basketball. And it was televised all over creation. It was live. You, you weren't going to fix nothing. It was going on. I think it was NBC maybe as, as we went on. 
Was it the no, coast to coast? Was it the coast to coast? Uh, no, it wasn't coast to coast. I don't think it was. No. Was it coast to? Oh yes, it was coast to coast, right? I've that got was, the I've got the the yeah. um I've got the mm -hmm. video over here, yeah. Right. Well, so you know, we're underneath the stage, you know, just seconds away from from popping up and starting the show, and and uh, Lars comes up to me and he says, "Hey, man." He says, uh, Lars don't give a damn about how great your tone is. Lars don't give a damn if you sound great. Lars don't give a damn if you play the right notes. And I'm going like, those three things, I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm some kind of pompous asshole or something, but I'm pretty good at all those things. <laughs> right? Now they don't matter, right? And it's like, and I've yet to, to, to do a gig with them. This is my first gig and no rehearsal either, right? And <laughs> our cameras were rolling on TV. So we get up on stage, man, and I'm like a deer in the headlights. Um, then, you know, after the first song goes by, second song, I'm still, I cannot hear a single note that I'm playing. Nothing. And I'm playing, I'm playing Marshall Amplifiers. Yeah, yeah. You know? And he looked at me up from across the stage and winked his eye at me and he says, oh, I got you. Doesn't play them. Doesn't matter if you play the right notes. If you sound great, because he, he said all I want you to do is have, have a great time with the crowd. And the reason he says that because he ain't gonna hear a damn thing when you get up there. <laughs> I, was, I couldn't hear nothing, man. I think it's but we finally played a ballad, and I'm like, oh, God, I can't hear what I'm doing now. <laughs> because you know back then we didn't have any ears and all that stuff, you know. And, uh, oh wow, 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 wow! That's amazing. That it's you know, um years I I I I learned how to adjust. But, <laughs> But another super cool thing he told me one day, it was at a sound check years and years ago and some arena somewhere. And he, he comes up to me at sound check and he says, man, he says, you see that banner way, way up on the top of the arena? He says, I said, yeah. He says, well, you see that seat right underneath that banner? You know, this is a, the, the, the farthest of the nosebleed section. Yeah, yeah. He said, if you can connect your guitar to the person sitting in that seat, you got everybody else in between. Yeah. So, so all through the years, ever since he told me that, I always play for the nose. I reach out, you know. I mean, my favorite guy is David Gilmore, and he's the best at, at, at playing big stadiums, you know. Like yeah, he's yeah. The king, he's the king, you know. I, I, I just try to get in his mind a little bit on how he would do it, you know, kind of thing. But it's a good attitude to have. I mean, one of the, I think one of the things I, I, I early on, like, I think it was the first, performance this is garth that i saw it was syndicated over here and i just went whoa well, who is this guy but he did the same thing he, he went and sat at the, the nosebleeds mm -hmm. and he's looking at the stage he said how can i connect with and there are so many artists and you probably know them yourself even superstars who come on stage and they really don't give a you know a monkeys as i'll call it um about the audience they'll just come do the thing if they connect with them, great. If they don't, they don't. And then they just walk off and then that's it. You know, don't even come back for an encore, some of them, you know, because they think that they're the big might uh, and almighty. But one of the things I've, I've consistently got with Garth, and you see the razzmatazz and all the things that go with it. But since I've started to do this program and, still, and since starting to talk with Ali, Kent, you know, Steve Warren, yourself, Jimmy, it becomes... You know, it's not true what you hear. It's the stuff behind it. He's a kind person. And is, if you're a friend, you're a friend for life. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And uh, and also, also, man, there's there's something going on on stage that's on that stage with him that is sometimes I feel that there's another supreme <laughs> level of power going on. Because, yeah. man, we, we've been so exhausted uh, all through that arena tour we did from 2014 through 19, I think it was, uh, doing two shows a night, you know, two, three yeah. hours a night. And, you know, sometimes it's two, three nights in a row. And, you know, sometimes, man, you, you came out for that second show after you've done a couple of nights like that already. And you, you have zero in you left. You've left everything. Your, your, all your emotion, your energy, your yeah. testosterone, your, you name it, every, all that stuff that you got, it's gone. And somehow, man, we just step on that stage and it just, you know, it's at 120 again. Just just go and go and, you know. I know there's a, there was a major disappointment some years ago, obviously, with the island thing, with whatever went on. 
Um, I was um, I was saying to Jimmy though, but it was off air. I didn't record this bit, but I said I got my tickets off eBay, so I couldn't get my money back because you used to be able to get them on eBay at that time. The guy just left, and I went, oh. So we all went. I mean, me, me, my wife, and that we all went, and we met a lot of people throughout the UK, and they all went, and we just had a massive party the other weekend. They put like tribute acts on. There's one band, very, very good, extremely mm-hmm. good, and. I've said this story a few times on here, but it, it, we went into this big bar and it was an amazing bar near the Liffey in Ireland, the, 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 the river there. And they put this band on it. And I said, the band were tight. They were really good musicians. And the, the, the singer come on, he had the Garth shirt and you know a similar hat and and, the, and it was okay. But he's, <laughs> Thunder Rolls came on. And because these guys were Irish, and again, apologies for everybody in Ireland. I don't mean to be disrespectful on this, but it, it's quite pertinent to the show. <laughs> he started to go, 3.30 in the morning. We're going, 3, 3.30. And he went, the thunder rolls. And he was singing the thunder rolls. And we were all laughing, you know, fell about laughing because we'd had a few root beers and stuff. <laughs> and he's going, the thunder rolls. And he's like, looking, like, why are these people laughing? The Tundra Rolls, because he had obviously the Irish Lilt and stuff like that, but it was an amazing event. And, and on the next day, I hired a car, went down to Southern Ireland, and we found there was a race meeting there at Wexford. Went to a race, horse race meeting, and I won about five races. So it paid for the weekend. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and the Irish, man, we were all so sad. We yeah. We had all those shows at Crow Stadium, what is it, six years ago now? Yeah, but anyway, it's one. Of, it is what it is, and hopefully get back. Or certainly come over to the UK would be absolutely brilliant. But you're not all. Also, like I said at the beginning, you're not just a musician of the highest caliber. You're a songwriter and producer as well. And you're producing other acts and other artists. And like I say, Audra McLaughlin, who came on the other week, who kindly linked us up, and, and Jimmy, she's a phenomenal singer, absolutely brilliant. I can't believe she's not signed yet. Well, we're working on it. Uh, we're about to present her to some labels. Uh, you know, the, the whole lockdown pandemic thing, uh, yeah. it just sent things in all kinds of weird, unfortunate directions and stuff. But, you know, uh, you know, people like Jimmy, Matt and me and myself, we stay, we stay very busy. You know, we both have our own studios and stuff. And, and in this case, uh, we're co-producing Audra McLaughlin, right? And, and yes, she is, she is a special, special singer and and uh, uh, we're real excited to uh, to be working with her, and and so we're about to present her to to, to uh, three different labels. Uh, oh, good luck to that! You yeah. Know, so, so hopefully, hopefully we'll. I've been good. You know, but you know, should I say this too? There's some other fantastic artists that I'm going to name right now. That please, yeah. Uh, I've got a girl, the Sarah Ryder, that you'll be looking out for her. Sarah Harrelson, Rebecca Moreland. Uh, uh, just some some other girls that I'm working with right now that are truly 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 amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, lo- I love working with Jimmy though in the studio. He's him and I are so much. We think we think very much alike. I don't know is it because we've been playing together for so long, right? But I really like working with him in the studio. But also, you're very hard working as well. I mean, one of the things Jimmy said at the interview, he said, "Oh, it looks like Johnny's not coming." I said, "Yeah, it's just massive raises. He's, he's mowing his lawn." And I said, he's a superstar, he should get picked. He said, no, he won't get anybody. He's, he's a hard grafter. And I said, I feel really important now that he's actually not come on because he's mowing his lawn. Um, but, but, the, but, that, but that in itself said the kind of guy you are, and Jimmy, because obviously farm, he was a farm but, uh, boy growing up and yeah. stuff, yeah. hard working. And one of the things we're on about with the BCMA, uh, putting like the workshop series, is that hard graft and having not just in music, but in everything else. And, and and you've took that in your careers, haven't you? That sort of hard graft, that hard life that you've had and growing yeah. up. I mean, as, as growing up as, as, a, as a kid, uh, the first 18 years of my life, uh, we were migrant farm laborers. Uh, we lived in Texas, but we used to migrate to like Alabama in April to work in the potato fields um, and then South Alabama, then July, North Alabama, North Alabama to keep doing the potato fields. And you, you're picking all this stuff by hand back in the day. You know? yeah. We moved on to, after that, like in August, we go to 
Indiana or Ohio and then do all the tomato fields over there. Wow. Once once the, the frost came and killed the tomato crop, we would go to Michigan to do the apple crops. So we didn't end up getting back to Texas till December and I'd go to school from like December through, you know, mid-April every year. But somehow or other, it all, it all worked out. But when I turned 18, I told my dad, I said, man, dad, I ain't doing this crap anymore. <laughs> and he said, well, boy, I'm surprised it took you this long to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I wouldn't take a day of it back because it, um, my dad, man, he showed me how, how to be the ultimate worker, Yeah, you know, and work hard every day of your life. And yeah, I, I, I mow my lawn. I mow my neighbor's lawns, you know. Wow. Yeah, uh, and and then my wife, my wife, uh, she has a saying that says there ain't no superstars at twenty four hundred Fairbrook, which is my address, uh, and she she will volunteer me because I'm uh, I don't know people a lot of people don't know this but I'm actually a master electrician and I am a I'm a plumber as well and I'm a carpenter, uh, and so when neighbors need electrical work plumbing wow. work, Miss says oh no my husband will go change out your water heater don't worry about it. And and so sometimes I get home from a trip and you know go help out my neighbors do their wow city and and they're like we saw you on TV last night man now you're fixing my what here I know it'd be all right if they got like family around said oh, there's my plumber <laughs> <laughs> eighty five thousand in Nebraska there's my plumber you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that that again that for me not knowing you as I do or as I did I mean getting to know you now but that speaks volumes about a person. You know, a, a fella said to me once, because I, I worked pretty much up until eight, nine months ago, I took early retirement and, you know, saved up and because I'd, I'd never never done the singing full time. It was always a passion for me for 20 years. And um, I and then one of my first jobs was in a factory, a pharmaceutical factory uh, in my hometown here, St. Helens, like I said, near Liverpool. And. I left that to become into sales and into like insurance sales and things like that, you know, and for, for a long time. And the guy said to me, and I said, you, you interviewed 200 people. How come you took me and my best friend and my best buddy and um, at the same time, how come we got the jobs? He said, you can take the guy out the factory, but you can't take the factory out the guy. And I always, I always hold that through because he said, I've got people here with diplomas and blah, blah, blah. And they can't, they've no people skills at all. He said, you two come in, you know, I might have a, a, a very limited education. And he said, you're blowing out the water because people love you. You know, people like talking and, and interacting with people. And I always took that and hold that dear that somebody said, you always take. And another one as well, he said, a foreman said to me, very first, I was only 16. I started work the day Elvis died. And obviously that was on the 16th of August, um, 1977. And I was obviously, I'll always remember that. But um, one of the first foremen said to me, he said, listen, Paul, I'm going to give you some advice. I said, well, it's always nice to be nice. Yep. And then a the little sort of commandments that I've got in my heart to make me use. Yeah, and it, and it, 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 it takes so much to me, it takes so much less energy to be nice or a good, yeah. good person than it is to be an asshole. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, well, just... you know these people that go, I tell them what I think. I go, oh, well, why? <laughs> you just upset them. What have you done that for? You know. And and uh, there was a, a girl. A, a brief brief story. I was playing in a duo, and in Liverpool it was, and this in this club, and you know, just like a, a normal sort of bar kind of thing. And this woman was a battle axe and she always bragged about, you know, boasted about, I tell people what I think. If I don't like you, I'm going to tell you. And we got on all right with her. And then she said to me one day, we was playing there and she said, Paul, come here. I said, do you understand these people? I said, why? There's a non-alcoholic beer that has just come out. He said, and when I've been on holiday, they've completely sold out of it, thinking it was normal alcohol, but it's a lot cheaper. And I said, that's stupid. I can tell what's non-alcoholic and what's alcoholic and said i bet you can't this is amazing stuff i went no so she come down and she poured a drink of one and a drink of of um non-alcoholic and a drink of alcoholic and she said there you go and i hadn't a clue which it was and i went like that that's alcoholic and she laughed she was going i've got you you know i've i've done one on you and all that kind of thing you know made you a joke and all this kind of thing and i went 
I've just had two free drinks off you, girl. And she went, oh. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was quite funny. I never got booted back there again, but there you go. Um, <laughs> but um, one of the questions, just to finish off, Johnny, and I really appreciate your time with us. Um, I always ask this Mount Rushmore question where they always say, you can replace those heads of your history at the side of the mountain um, with people who's inspired you. It can be family, it can be music, it can be anything, sport or whatever. Who would you replace those four pillars at the side of the rock? Who would you replace them with? Man, I want to say um, Chris Garcia, Teo Garcia, Dante Garcia, and Mia Garcia. Those are my four children. Hey, that's a good one. That's a very good one. And they they do carry an inspiration to any father. I mean, I've got two daughters and they do inspire you every day, don't they? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Uh, that's uh, the biggest blessing of my life is, is having, having those kids. Yeah. I mean, I could go on and on about my influences of music, you know, and so forth. And uh, uh, of course, you know, uh, I mean, not just because these are my bosses, but Garth and Trisha are at the top. I was you know, going to say, I, I'm not going to, I hope Garth doesn't listen to this because he'd never mentioned Garth. I thought I better not say anything, you know. <laughs> Keep going, hey, man. <laughs> no, but I, I, one artist actually said to me, he said, one singer, he said, um, I've got so many. He said, well, you've got the chisel, man. You carry on around the mountain, you know. <laughs> but I know what you mean. I mean, family is the foundation to anything. And I think one of the pieces of advice that's come through all the, you know, the amazing songwriters and producers and, and artists that's come on and give advice to our, you know, our UK performers is that having great people around you, whether it's family or, you know, musically or whatever, but having that, that sort of, um, you know, like atmosphere around you and that support bubble around you mm -hmm. is key to making it yeah, in a career. Cool. Yeah. You, you, you just talk about Garth and Tricia. Uh, th those people, you know, when you feel lucky enough to get in in their family circle, and 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 you're a good person, then those people are loyal to you forever. Yeah, you know, and they don't want to let go. They, you know, they they just feel very comfortable around you. So you know, uh, absolutely, man. You know, uh, the the whole family thing, whether it's your your blood or whether it's like my my family with Trisha and Garth. Man, those are those those are very very special people. All the people that are in that in that camp, in those camps. Yeah, I mean, just like I said, just lastly now, can you name three songs for me that, like I said at the beginning before we recorded, I said, if you think about three songs that's inspired you, it could be an own favorite you've had nothing to deal with. It could be a song that you've produced or you've actually, you know, been on on. In, in the you know musically involved with it or it's just something that you just like listening to in the radio i mean is I mean, can you name three man i like to ask difficult one questions of the, one of yeah one of them is, is is a religious song called called i am here lord uh mm, yeah. i just love, love that song um and then uh let me see uh man uh people get ready by uh uh jeff beck and um, Rod Stewart. Yeah, it, it wasn't a hit or nothing like that. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh my gosh, I, I, it might be because of Jeff Beck's guitar playing, but that song just, just man, just floors me. Uh, and man, I'm gonna have to say that to this day. I mean, there's a million songs that 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 I love, right? But to this day, she's in love with a boy. Yeah. I mean, I've played, me and Trisha were trying to figure out the, the, the other day we were filming a cooking show for her cooking show. And we were trying to figure out how many times her and I have played that song. And I think we came up with about 1,500 times. Wow. <laughs> and when, when I play that song today, I feel like when I played it in 1991. Brilliant. He just takes me away like, Oh man, it's so awesome. When I hear it on the radio or when I'm in my studio late at night and I'm done, I'm just going to have a cold beer and go to bed and I just want to hear a song. Sometimes I put that song on, you know, it's just, it's just. I mean, again, 
when she was on at the Opry a couple of weeks ago, and, it, and it, obviously it's 30th anniversary of that, and, and it was so lovely to see her, like, singing there and and mm-hmm. having, like say, a full house as well in Nashville. But it just got me thinking, actually. I did see Tricia. She came over. Have you been to the UK with Tricia? Yes. Uh-huh. I, we bet I, to- I bet I... Did you come to Manchester? And there was Susie yes. Boggess, Don Watt, Don, um, Dale Watson, Alison Krauss? Yes, absolutely. I was there. I Were you? Oh my yep. goodness! Uh, that was what ninety five, six. Yeah, something like that. Again, Manchester to here is about twenty minutes away. It's it's where I live. Yeah. Um, but it was the MEN Arena, and um, I think Radio Two was was doing it, and it was just amazing to see all these artists because we hadn't had anything up north. You know, mm-hmm. we had everything was at Wembley and and London, but nothing up north. You know, and now it's getting a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more to it, isn't there now? There's a lot, you know, especially when COVID's finished. Obviously, we got the country to country in London. And then uh, from that, there's a lot of smaller venues getting the likes of Little Big Town to play and and, and whatever. And Joe Nichols was over um, playing a bar in Manchester with about 100 people in. A month later, he was on. He was opening for you guys at the stadium tour. <laughs> it was like... It was like yeah, I had- I actually played for Joe Nichols for about two years. Well, yeah. the young guards and Trisha, yeah. Good uh, guy. But, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and what a voice. My goodness. Uh, but, man, I tell you what, uh, the few times I've been to the UK, I absolutely have loved every 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 one of them, you know. Uh, that's just a, I love that part of the world. And the audiences are like, you know, there's nothing better than audiences over there, you know. Yeah. I'm not not our American audiences or anything. I'm just saying. Yeah, boy, and you know, over there, if 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 you if you perform well and 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 you you you're sincere about your music and the way you deliver it, man, they're they're amazing. But the audiences are just absolutely. Great. We've we've been very fortunate. So for like ten years ago, that the country to country came to the UK, and I actually went to the very first one. Um, I was four hours from the front centre because it was only me on my own because I was doing a little tour the next day on the south coast, and I only went for Vince Gill. Because I've never seen Vince Gill, and I'm a huge. He's, he, you know, apart from Garth, he's like my, you know, ultimate. And um, I, I was only there for, for for Vince Gill, but he wasn't headlining. It was Tim McGraw, help, you know, headlining, Little Big Town, and then uh, Christian Bush from Sugarland. And it was such an amazing event, and I just, I got, I just got blown away. You know, Vince just come on, unassuming, playing his guitar. <laughs> and now he's with the Eagles, which is one of my favorite bands. So it's like, <laughs> and I, I, I saw the Eagles with Vince a couple of years ago, because uh, me and Vince used to share the uh, same guitar tech, Benny Garcia, mm. all through the years. I mean, but if, but Vince, you know, if we were both performing somewhere at the same time, Benny would go with, with Vince. Uh, but uh, Benny, rest in peace. He passed away. Oh. Vince was absolutely this world king. Because him and Benny Garcia knew each other from like elementary school or something like that. That's how long they've been together. But yeah, Vince is, is the only artist that I know that plays his guitar exactly like he sings or yes. vice versa. You know, it's like his guitar has a voice like nobody else's. When he when he does a solo, I, I remember I think back in '93, John Huey, the great great steel guitar player, was his band leader for uh, for for uh, Vince and Vince and Trisha, we were, we were out in the, we were doing a, uh, like a year long tour together. And, and John Hughes says, Hey man, do you want, do you want to join Vince's band? And I said, first of all, I wouldn't leave Trisha in a million years. <laughs> Second of all, what the hell am I going to do if I join the band? Got a triangle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sitting the, back in the, behind the drummer <laughs> and then just do a little bit of support guitar. <laughs> Well, him and Brent Mason, I've seen it on YouTube when them are shredding it, like him and Brent Mason, I thought, and, and obviously Albert Lee. Yeah. Um, it's like unbelievable. I used to do a duo with a guy who, who modeled himself on, on Brent and, and Albert Lee. He was he just shredded it. It was like pff, Lee guitar, yeah. you know, is Brian, you know. Um, luckily, luckily, I know both Brent and Albert Lee very well. Albert Lee uh, was one of my top five influences influences of, as a young yeah. as a young guitar player uh, he influenced me tremendously uh what a guy man and i got to play with him several times in europe and uh 
uh, I was with Trisha, he was with Emily Harris and uh, our guitar techs would set up small amps in our dressing room for me and Albert Lee together, right? And we'd get there early and we'd just play and play and play. And Albert would go, how did you do that? How did you, you know? And I'm going, ah, shut up, dude. But, <laughs> but the thing was that I had studied everything that Albert had done, like wow. even his instructional tapes, you know, as a young guitar player. So by the time I met Albert, I like knew how to play like everything he did, <laughs> he did right? But I mean, I, I worked so hard on, on trying to, to uh, at least come close to his, you know, that technique that he had and, and yeah. so forth. But what a guy and what a soul though, man. Oh, it's this just guy, amazing. Guy, guy on the planet. He's still touring around the UK. One of these days I'll catch up with him, but I've never been able to see him. But now and again, some little pop up on Facebook and Albert Lee and the band, like, oh God, you know, mm -hmm. try and get the, but uh, no, phenomenal. And, 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 and like saying with Garth, I think Vince is a kind soul and a guy I'd love to just have a beer and just for an hour, just to chat. You know, yeah. you know, people who've met him or, or whatever. But I was just, my mouth was like that. The O2 was like, oh, my God. And he's just like, guitar slinger, giving it, you know. But yeah. um, but I want to thank you so much for coming on to the show, Johnny. It's been a, an absolute pleasure for me and uh, very, very informative and inspirational. And I thank you so much. Paul, man, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, man. You're, you're a really, really good guy, man. Uh, I want to say two quick things before we leave. Uh, just want to tell... Uh, fans out there that I'm finally coming out with a Johnny Garcia record. Yay! Yes, You've got to uh, send I, it to me. You've got to send it to me. I'm going to send it to you, bro. Yeah, I'm five songs in. I've got to get another five five in. And uh, it's going to be a combination of, you know, a rock and and a little bit of country maybe, but then some reggae and just some really, really fun stuff. It's it's not really going to be just nothing but guitar shredding. I'm beyond that. I'm, I just I just want to do really cool music and stuff. Brilliant. Uh, so, so stay tuned. I will send that. I will send it to you as soon as I get her done, man. And also, I'm uh, me and a friend of mine named Rebecca Morland. We're launching a new company called uh, Heirloom Songs. Uh, it's a it's a it's a company that it's brand new. Uh, it's a company that like you can call in. Anybody can call in with a story, you know, about your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your grandma somebody that passed away, whatever, your uncle, tell us a story. We'll write a song about it for wow. you. So, um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes, you know? Uh, so anyway, so amazing. Uh, but man, Paul, thank you, man, for, for, for having me do this. Is, this has been a great hour and a lot of fun to talk to you, man. I'll, you want to do this again sometime? I Absolutely. Well, hopefully we'll grab a beer. If we ever get over to Nashville, I'll, I'll hook you okay. and Jimmy up because then we'll, we'll go and grab a, a beer or something. I'm a beer lover, that's for sure. <laughs> well, good luck with the rest of the tour. Hopefully it'll kick off again at some point. And um, you and your family, you take care. You you and your family as well, man. Paul, take care of yourself, bro. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.